I mean, shall I start? Like, is there anyone coming? Okay. Yeah, I'll start the session. <coughs> yeah. Uh, good evening. Sorry. Good morning, session. Uh, so good morning. What do you think? Do you have any previous knowledge in this data analysis or data analytics? Any business intelligence tool? Any no. idea? No. So, what is your academic background? I am from IT. IT background. IT background. So, like, you did right? Like, yeah, I did beat it. What do you think? Yeah. Information technology. Okay. So when did you pass down? 2022. 2022. So you have basic understanding of coding, right? Like you use Java and all like when you're studying. Yeah. So so have you used Python? I, I am learning Python <coughs> half the way. And I didn't learn it. Uh, I just learned so you the have basic. A basic understanding of Python, right? Yeah, I am. <coughs> So uh, today I'm going to give you a demo on uh, data analytics. Okay. So okay. what is the path to become a data analyst? Okay. Okay. So to kick, uh, to kick start. So so we are going to teach you the like uh, principal concepts. Like uh, so, what are the principal concepts of data analytics? Uh, and also, what is the life cycle of data analysis? Okay. okay. So this will be the I main the concept that you need in order to become a data analyst. And uh, what is the life cycle? Like what is the starting point and what is the ending point? Okay. We are going to teach you from start to end. And so the first question would be why is data analytics important? Like uh, what is the purpose of data analysis? Like what kind of insights can you get from data analysis? Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, as a data analyst, your role is majorly revolved around these four things. So, okay. Primarily, you have to give the insights to the company which uh, okay. the great insights like, the data uh, they will give you a sales if they give you a sales data so you should be able to come up with uh, in during which period uh, there's uh, their sales are at peak and why is that during which period during which month or during which quarter they are having less sales and why is that and who are the target customers like uh, how much are they spending and uh, what uh, what kind of uh, people are spending more and uh, you have to do the detailed analysis of a particular uh, data like you have to generate reports also like just giving the insights is not enough you have to generate reports and forward i mean give it to the other teams other marketing teams other sales teams which is it's your job and third thing is like uh, you have to perform market analysis market analysis means identify i mean identifying your uh, uh Oppose uh, what you say, competitors and finding out how they are doing it and what are they doing it and how what are this uh, what are what what are the strategy they are using and how many basically you have to identify your customer identify your competitors and anal analyze them okay in order to improve your own business okay so that's okay. what uh, market analysis means and next thing is improve business requirement improve business requirement uh, to give you a small example. Improve business requirement means like let us say you are a you are a sales company um, uh, or any company let us say you're banking or any company improving business requirement means like let us say every time like you perform a, a transaction a customer will give you a review okay like whether it's good bad or in, in order to have to, uh, if there is anything that company can do better or any client can do better so basically they will give you a feedback saying that uh, yeah you can improve here you can improve there. basically you have to uh, go through these uh, customer reviews and you can analyze them and uh, do the top uh, what most uh, requested requirements to the company so that the company can improve and the customer will feel more better like uh, it's more user friendly any anything okay i'm just giving a broader uh, like a general example like improving business requirement means uh, making sure that uh, what how the company needs to go in the sense let's say if you are a sales uh, let's just say amazon is there and yeah. uh, they're selling products and the products comes under different things like this let's say they are by uh, you are selling in water bottle and many of them complaining that it's not a holding of the heat and uh, so immediately what the data analyst of the particular water company like uh, call the comments or the reviews that you will suggest it to the company and company will improve that's one of uh, that's one of the become that's one of the part of your role okay so taking okay. the feedback from the customers and analyze them and uh, give it to the company that. <coughs> so uh so this is basically like the general report in the sense like uh, how 
what kind of tools we are going to use, what kind of tools we are going to use, and how we are going to collect them, and how we are going to generate the reports. So basically, we we'll get back to this slide. Uh, so the concepts and tools that we are going to use here in Python, the basic thing like. Uh, uh, you should know Python in order to become a data analyst. I mean, Python, uh, Python is a is where you all perform actions in the sense, like you say, I uh, use data set, and it's obviously it won't be clear. When you give you a raw data, you have to clean it, and then you have to perform basic detail operations, extract, transform, and load. Okay, in order to perform that, we use Python. Okay, uh, we we'll use Python because it's uh, simple and readable, and the code is readable, so we we'll use Python and. Uh, for all basic cleaning and transforming operations, uh, and then also, uh, you know, visual visualization can also be done in Python. But obviously, that is basic visualization. Once uh, we perform all the cleaning, and uh, then we will perform some static uh, like normalization. We'll do like we'll perform some mathematical concepts on. Okay. okay. And the, here comes the statistics. Like we we'll use statistics to analyze the data in a. Uh, in a more reformed way. Okay. Once it's done, then we'll store it in the SQL and then we'll use okay. SQL is some okay. Uh, do you have any idea what is SQL is? No. Okay. Basically, SQL is a uh, SQL, okay. SQL, is, SQL stands for a sequence query language. What it is is a data management system. Okay. So what it do is I just say imagine uh okay, you have a bank account, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, how do the bank knows that uh, uh, Shashank uh, have this customer okay, account number? And how does the bank know that when you give your account number, it's Shashank? Right? The front end application, like you, suppose you are using SBA and uh, it will ask for your name, uh, username, and password. Like when you enter the username and password, back, okay, what happened in the back end is back end there will be a database. Okay. Okay. Uh, Right. The database in the sense, uh, it, it, it is just a, at the end of the day, it is just a table. Table containing your account number, your name, and your password. When you enter the password, which is uh, over there, like which which you were previously given, it's a match. <coughs> so when it is a match, SQL. Uh, I mean, basically that data was stored in S uh, SQL servers. Okay, SQL database. So when you enter the correct password number and correct password number. So what it's going to do is when you enter something into this uh, UI that you will see right when you the UNO app, you will have a username and password. When you enter those correctly, what will happen is, I mean, imagine this, you just entered random numbers. When you enter the random numbers, these random numbers will go into the back end. From front end to, they will go to back end. And from back end to, they will go to this servers. And when it is a match, you will enter the site. When it is not a match, uh, what going to do, what, what will happen is, uh, the password didn't match, so it is not Shashank. So cut off. Like what we're going to do? Like uh, invalid password. Like they'll display the invalid password. So basically, what happens in this database is they'll store the data, and when you give, uh, so basically what you're doing is you're entering the account number and password. It's called giving a query. Okay. okay. Once you say again, yeah. you go to the back door, back end, and if it is the actual password that you have given previously. If it is a match, then it is a valid. Uh, let him enter into the portal. If it is wrong, what is what's going to do? Invalid user or invalid password. That's what SQL is. Basically, what it will do is like it will store the data, and I mean then after okay, let's just imagine you give a right password. Then you will enter this right. You enter into that, and then you will see what is your balance and what is your uh, let's just say you put some loans. What is your loan status? And then, so these all data in SQL. Okay. So. Like each table has different different data, but they are stored in tables and they are in backend. And when you write this uh, right query of account number and password, you will enter into the site. And then once you enter the site, you will display all the values which is uh, uh, regarding your account will be displayed, which also is stored in SQL data. Okay. Am I making sense? Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Yes. So what is SQL like? Just just close your data. Okay. Okay, and then Power BI is for let's say uh, visualization. Let's just say in um, uh, visualization in the sense like uh, okay, uh, let's just say you in the app itself uh, you want to see what is the right now there is no option right there in SBI I guess. So imagine you want to see your spendings in app itself. Right now there is no option like that. But imagine you just want to see like how much you spend on January, how much you spend on. Uh, February and how much you spend on like like month wise. 
okay so that can be done by power bi power bi in the sense like you can create visuals with the data let's like say you have a table that containing all 2020 uh expenditures from january to december and uh, like january you spend 10000 february you spend something like that. so basically it, it is hard to read like it will be a dual what dual boxes of uh, like uh, you have dual rows in the table and then it's hard to read like uh, but whereas in visual like it simply can be represented by a pie chart or simply by bar chart like this bar chart you can see like which, uh, what is the month that you spend most what is the month that you spend least okay. so bob is for visuals and python uh, sql is for uh, data story and uh, basically uh, you can store the data and you can retrieve the data from sql okay so basically we are going to use these four things in order to become a data analyst basically you have to learn these four things and you don't have to be in the python in sense like you just need python which is a very uh, small amount of python in sense like you don't have to learn the whole python you just need something something in the sense you just know how to use uh, pandas library numpy library matplotlib and that that's, that is a my my expert seaborn okay these are the four libraries we're going to use and it's not that hard so basically the python which you're going to be using is more like a So data cleaning okay yeah, 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 yeah. the duplicates or uh there is extra so the company they are very simple it's very simple for that to normalize the data what is what is we will break i mean yeah we'll, when you when you studying the subject we will going to is abhi season hai na har roz kitne clean karte hain analytics applications right there so What is the purpose of statistics? Yeah, is to book, collect the pattern, book, like you book, know the statistics. Right? Book, what is the meaning of statistics? We collect the data for a period of time and we analyze the data. That's what statistics is, right? When you when uh, when you in ninth or tenth standard, the in the college, I mean in school, the teacher statistics. What what they do? Basically, statistics. The meaning of statistics is like we will collect the data and we will predict the pattern. Okay. So as a data analyst, your job is to collect. Okay. So the data. 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 to recognize the patterns in the data the we need statistics okay so we're going to uh, yeah we're going to learn statistics like we don't need a uh, full fledged complex statistics just need few concepts in the statistics okay we're going to learn what we need and we don't have to worry about uh, learning all the but and uh, by the way you don't have to use the formulas in data analysis those are all pre-read like just import agar na hum nahi just have to know that you have to use this particular uh, library and that's all you don't have to worry about it like you don't have, uh, we're not going to learn the math uh, math behind it but it's good to know uh, the math behind it but it's not absolutely required okay so this is how it works okay so basically in uh, uh, what happened the behind the curtain is so we'll have this mysql database like this is where our we'll collect the data okay and once we have the data if you want to analyze it like we establish a connection between mysql and then you can you can open the mysql in python like once we analyze like uh, bring the data forward you clean it and what you perform this mathematical operations whatever you want or uh, any operation that you want to perform yeah. so once you clean it, it, and then you can clean it as it is simple as Okay. हाँ हम काली है समर्थित में या 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 इसको यूज़ कर रहे हैं तो मोस्टली या हम इंटर में और तो भी हाँ भी कॉल कर रहे हैं नो यार सो यू ऑल डिस्कस दिस एंड देन हाँ पाइथन इस सिंगल लैंग्वेज लाइक स्ट्राइक फॉर लाइक वी यूज़ पाइथन फॉर इटियल ऑपरेशंस बट वेरास इन एसक्यूएल देर आर डिफरेंट वेरिएंस ऑफ एस Why there are different variants of SQL? Is, let's just say, imagine MySQL, right? MySQL is an RDF, RDF language. RDF MS means relational database management system. Database management system is like. हम ये SQL में जो नया सा imagine DB होता है. Simply you store data. ये एक बार जो आप बोल रहे हैं. That's like you already saw. Simply मैं करवा देते हैं. Ah, when when it comes to the banking system, the bill name, and then your account number, and then your current balance and whatever. Like basically, it will be in a table. But whereas, imagine you want to store. text and not text and you want to store who be come or video okay it is advanced right okay if you come under sql also so you come under sql but it is an advanced system of data wala so so the basic will be will be starting with my sql and then for this course we'll close with my sql also but for future reference there is something called postgres sql and no sql postgresql is like object relational database management system where you can store images and as well as videos uh it is 
it is very similar to my sql but it's as a beginner i would suggest go with sql and uh, you would be able to deal with tables majority of the day, like uh, uh, majority of the work which we will be doing as a data analyst you will be, you'll be dealing with uh, uh, so don't have to worry about images at all but there but you should be aware there is something called uh, you can store images and videos as well and uh, that comes under postgresql and nosql for this course we will stick to msql and uh, we'll study this rdbms uh, mysql is rdbms rdbms means like general sql means dbms dbms means database ma database management system where there are tables okay rdbms means there are tables and they have connections and this is like each table is connected with a relationship okay so there is dbms so each table is connected with a relationship and what is relationship how to connect the tables with the relationship and we will get into that okay so don't worry about it and then so i already explained this uh there will be a client client in the sense you are the client and web servers web servers and application servers are your uh, bank account like uh, whatever sbi or uh union union bank whatever you're using and back end will be database okay so this back end will be database when you enter this your account number and password it will go back to the servers and if you enter the val uh like valid username and password then will go like you'll go get into database and whatever the information you are requested it will come back and display okay so basically the information was previously stored in your database and as per this you get this uh or like imagine like uh, uh you can i mean you can for the practical example imagine like uh, you you are doing a transaction in uh, any shop right let's just say you paid them uh, let's just say when you scanned and you paid through phone pay this is what happens like it will go to this web servers and application servers and database like does he have the balance to pay this uh money yes we have the balance so give, uh, give him go ahead and then it will go like this and it will come back let's just say imagine you don't have the enough balance to pay this then what will happen uh from client to web servers to web servers to application servers and database like you don't have the balance of this particular amount so deny it and then it will come like this and, and it will display you don't have the enough balance so this is how the flow goes from client to web server, web servers to application servers and database. And then from the database, like it has this balance, it will come to client saying this, yes, you have the balance, mm, go ahead and transfer them. If you don't have the balance, deny them. It will go like this, okay? So this okay. is what database management is. And uh, we are, go as I mentioned before, we are running this MySQL. Why we are running MySQL? Because MySQL is an open source and it's easy to use, moreover. <coughs> yeah sorry and it provides security like uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the data leakage and everything and it's flexible it's easy to use and all okay this is about this mysql let's let's uh, go back and we discussed about python like is this a programming language where you want where you can perform certain actions that you want and we need statistics to detect the pattern and uh, sql is database management system and uh, as power bi let me go to this another presentation like uh, we are uh just give me a minute i have to open this presentation for power bi okay so until now we discussed uh, about uh, python statics and sql like uh, python is a programming language and statics in order to analyze the part detect the pattern in uh, data we need statics and sql is a data business, uh, data management system where we store the data and if you a particular command is given and it has to display this particular uh, output right and this power bi power bi is completely different tool which is used for visualization and why we need visualization uh imagine like on left side you have some data like it's hard to visual it's hard to read like it's not comprehensible in the sense when you look at it it's just a bunch of numbers and text but whereas in visuals you are able to clearly see that uh, what hap or what is happening and let's just imagine you have sales for uh, last 20 years it, in order to understand that you can't just go through this uh, data and read it and be able to understand because it doesn't make sense like it is uh, it's not that understandable or readable it's hard to read but whereas visuals which ones can easily make you understand that what's happening in the past 20 years if you have the past 20 years of sales data you can easily understand like in which years the data is the sales are peak in which year like our production is at high and in which year we got the maximum profits and everything basically it's uh it's easy to understand when it is visuals that's why we need visualization simple as that and uh, so here uh why we're choosing power bi uh that is completely different in the sense uh why not uh, there are a lot of visualization tools out there but the power bi there are tableau and clicksense these are the three popular visualization tools but we are choosing power bi because uh this look at this graph okay this graph shows that uh, 
uh, I mean, there is something called Google Trends. You can find it in your laptop. Like when you open the Chrome, search for Google Trends, which shows the trend of any tool or application in the market. The blue line, uh, blue line is for Power BI, and this for Tableau, and this yellow is for Pixels. Uh, if you see uh, this graph is for the past five years, that uh, like popularity of the Power BI has been constantly increase and reach the reach the maximum in 2023. So, uh, like, market, like majority of the companies are using uh, Power BI. Mm. So that's why it's one of the most used uh, tool in the entire market. So that's why we're going to use Power BI for visualization. And uh, that's not the only reason that we are using Power BI. Power BI has, uh, if you are aware of Excel, like in Excel, you can write, write functions. Like uh, there are several different functions. Similarly, uh, in Power BI also, we have functions. Like uh, there are total up to 1200 uh, functions uh, where you can do the custom calculation. Like you can perform uh, def different, different operations with these functions. And there are total of uh, 280 plus visuals like the, uh, According to your data, according to the requirement of the client, you can plot the uh, data set. And the last thing is uh, cost of it. It's very cost mm -hmm. compared to Tableau. Tableau will cost you around uh, 20 to 30 dollars, whereas Power BI will be less than 10 dollars. And it is uh, yeah, it has one of the major uh, one of the major advantages Power BI has data connectivity. Like uh, doesn't matter what format your data is in, uh, it is in PDF or if it is in a website or if it is in uh, whatever the file, like if it is in SQL or if it is in Azure Cloud, uh, doesn't matter the format, all the formats are available. There are total around 100 plus formats, 100 plus different sources from where you can import the data into the Power BI. Okay? So, uh, basically, this Power BI is used to visualize the data and why we visualize the data? to get insights into the data once you visualize like you can clearly see the pattern okay so before visualization you need to perform this uh, mathematical operations and also you, you also need to clean the data and also if, it, if your database is huge then you have to store the data and where do you store the data you will store it in sql it comes in order primarily let us say you are working with a huge data set then it will be in the sql data and then you retrieve the data and then in python you will do this uh, pattern recognition and once you are done like here itself you can see but that is not enough like to visually uh, i mean uh, so that you are able to express uh, to the stakeholders in the company or uh, to show it to the your manager or any team in your particular company uh, just the visuals that uh, appear in the python is not enough like you know you have to perform uh, you have to create many visuals uh, for that purpose in, in python also you can create visuals but those are basic visuals we we'll go into the advanced level like we'll move on to this power here and where you can create a, a dashboard where you can create a dashboard showing all the uh, required requirements like uh, all the required things things like what are the sales what are the total sales what is the sales by january what is the sales for the quarter like, there are multiple images can be shown in a single picture that is called dashboard that is why we need power bi okay in python we can create visuals but those are all a single okay every time you run a particular code you do a single picture and it is not interactive whereas in python in power bi you can create interactive dashboards in the sense uh, when you select for a particular interactive dashboard in the sense uh, imagine uh, you have a dashboard saying that uh, sales and profits and revenue and you have each diagram for uh, you have uh, each uh, diagram for one particular thing and when you select january automatically every diagram will adjust itself like what are the sales in january what are the revenue in january what are the total profit in january like these are called interactive dashboards and you select a particular month or particular quarter or particular year so all the images will automatically adjust itself it's called interactive dashboards and you can create them in only in power bi you can't you can't generate them in uh, python or any in r also r is also something uh, similar language i think you are aware of it so there is that so in power bi it consists power bi consists three main uh, applications one is desktop power bi desktop and power bi service and power bi mobile okay desktop is where you perform your operations in the sense creating the dashboard and everything will be done in power bi desktop uh, power bi service is for publishing the report publishing the report in the sense let us say you are uh, working from home and whereas your company uh, is in bangalore right imagine that 
and let's just say you want to send them the report like you can't i can't send this a uh, pdf file i mean uh, uh, pdf is for uh, this reports and all but power bi will be the uh, extension of the power bi will be pbi so you can't send them the pbx file right so you have to share them in order to share them you have to publish the report like there is something called power bi service it's a cloud service where you can publish the reports and everyone who have access to the partic uh, particular uh, like uh, if it is your uh, company platform Every every person who is available in the platform will get a report. Like, are able to access it? Uh, there is something beyond that. Let's just say uh, your company has. I mean, you subscribe to subscri subscri this uh, OBM mobile. If they download it in your mobile, uh, they will automatically receive an alert saying that uh, the report has been published and take a look at it. And they are able to see this. Uh, this is one of the uh, future that uh, allows uh, many of the people to choose OBM. Uh, because every time you publish a report, they'll get an alert in the mobile saying that the report has been published. Like uh, you can set daily reminders also. Like uh, uh, once you're done with uh, the BI, it's for business intelligence in the power BI. Meaning, so uh, you can set an automation like that if for every uh, for every week at Friday 5 p.m. Send the uh, generator report and send it to this uh, particular people. It will generate the report based on the data. Like once you do it, it will automate for the next time. You can do that in power BI. You can automate the process. Uh, so basically, before that, you have to show like okay, you data like this, and then like uh, perform these operations, and then send the report. Okay, so that's Power BI. So you can automate the process. Uh, in Excel, also you can do that, and it's called macros. Uh, I guess you are aware of it, or uh, doesn't matter. Like we don't have to worry about it. And then the components of I mean here we discussed the three components in Power BI, and then now we are coming to the particular Power BI desktop. Okay. In Power BI Desktop, so we have main, uh, we have another three components. Like uh, in Power BI Desktop, we have Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View. Okay, Power Query is for this ETL. ETL in the sense, like here also you can perform these operations. But uh, once, if, it, if it if it is required, you can perform ETL. If not, if you yeah, can the, it, the, it's clean and all. But anyway, you have to check the data types and you can do some uh, certain operations here which you can't perform in Python. So you can do that here. And power pivot is data modeling. Data modeling in the sense, uh, where you build relationships. Just like in uh, SQL, you can build a relationship here also. Okay, you can establish relationship from table to table. And uh, you can do that in power pivot. And power view is data visualization, where you perform the visualizations. Okay, where you plot the graphs and maybe uh, put it on a map. You can generate maps also if you have this data on uh, broad perspective. And this, this is how the dashboard looks like. Okay, so basically you, you, here you can select any particular order based uh, based on the order it will change like when it when it will happen or total sales like uh, this is how the typical dashboard looks like you can based on the particular uh, filter you are selecting all the that all the uh, canvas here on the dashboard will automatically adjust okay. So the Power BI architecture this is how the Power BI architecture looks like so. Here, uh, this is a good way of uh, showing that how the SQL servers will be applied here. Here, you can see the data source here, right? You can keep this as my uh, SQL database, okay? So, your SQL database will be connected to this uh, Power BI service. And then from Power BI desktop, you can, you can access the data. And once you access the data, you can perform these visualizations. And once you perform the visualizations, you can send the reports. You can generate the reports here in the Power BI desktop, and you can publish them in the Power BI service. And then all the people who is having access will get the reports. Okay. So here in the data source, we are going to use uh, this SQL database. Okay. So that's how we connect this uh, Power BI and SQL database. Okay. So this is an example of case study. Uh, so basically, why we need Power BI in the sense we, we already discussed uh, this. We don't need that. So uh, let's move on to this uh, curriculum. So what we're going to teach in Power BI. So we're going to start with introduction and then we'll move on to this uh, data extraction. Extraction in the sense uh, where we remove any uh, unnecessary things, which is in our data and all. And then we'll transform it. Basically in transform, uh, in the transformations, we perform ETL operations and all. So in data extraction, we'll be using this uh, MySQL. In MySQL, is our, uh, like, uh, we'll establish a connection between our Power BI and uh, SQL database. Once we establish the connection, then we can extract the data. And we, once we extract the data, and then we'll perform these ETL operations. And then we'll move on to this uh, modeling.
and after the modeling we will we'll, we'll establish a relationship kind of the chinchin the desktop we can create the visuals and once we create the visuals then we can publish in the power bi service and these are some advanced hmm. power bi we're going to look into it in this embedded power bi and also power bi advanced with the power bi premium and that will conclude the session on power bi so now you have the basic understanding of power bi in the sense what is the purpose of power bi like uh, i know it's not much in the sense like uh, it's new and unable to grasp it like in the sense like you will get a basic understanding of power bi but uh, what are the components and all uh yeah so with practice you can easily master the power bi power bi is not that complicated if you know excel power bi can easily be mastered and so in this particular course what we're going to do is like uh, we're going to learn how to establish a connection between sql and power bi and we'll take a data and then we'll store it in the sql and then we'll establish a connection with the power bi and then we'll do the visualization in power bi before that so we'll also do this we also learn how to connect this uh, sql and python and also we're going to learn some uh uh statistics normalization and all so there is that so if you have any more queries you can ask me or so i hope you understand what i'm saying hello sushant do you have any doubts yes yeah understood ask <coughs> do you have any any doubts <coughs>